Okay, got run here, gang ready to continue trudging through Act 5 here. Just getting ready to go in. I'm currently in the passage to Corvus. I've already taken care of all the menial inventory stuff I'd have to do back in town. So I'm just going right back into the game playing and heading in from there. Probably by going to all the other secondary clubs that I can go to. So I'd rather make sure I have the experience <clears throat> rather than find out later that I could have gotten the experience and didn't. Plus I like my achievements and hopefully that'll pop sometime. The crusade marches on! Oops. <laughs> 28, that's not a bad number. That's not a bad number at all. Can also do this, though. That helps them off pretty that. quickly, too. Oh, it was 32. Interesting. I actually do more damage by concentrating the ground than I do by sucking them in and blasting them out. I wonder if that means I'm going to have to rethink my uh, abilities here. I don't think I will. Which, I mean, everything's working well for me, so it works on the next champion. Everything's already working, there's no sense change. I only use it when I'm swarmed when I'm fighting a champion or boss anyway. Really. I don't just arbitrarily have everybody get sucked into the explode. And then again on the other half of that I also don't arbitrarily just concentrate the ground either. I think there's supposed to be some kind of healing for it as well. No, it's just the enemy's taking damage, that's what I've got, so pure damage. And they take a lot of it too. I'm not actually attacking, the only one attacking is my uh, follower. And that consecration is 5,000 in change per second. That's not bad at all. Maybe I can use it as a finisher to the explosion. Even the album is more than a shot when I concentrate the ground. Took a lot of damage very quickly. You surprised the heck out of me, actually.
these quickly. Certainly a big enough password. But I get worried because I often find that when the wizard does a bad on the back, they make bigger dungeons and that's supposed to equal content. And that's not the same in my eyes. A big dungeon is great. But uh, having us roll endless dungeons is not the same as go uh, destroy life like the left at the end of the uh, main game. So this is all right and all, but honestly, there are parts of me that wish there was more, uh, a little bit more substance. Like this in the I guess we'll see how things pan out as I get further in. idea if I'm going the right way or the wrong way. To me, the wrong way is the right way. Early exploration. I don't want to go the right way because there's so much stuff I haven't done. I go the wrong way. So, at the moment, there's so much where I'm going. Kind of hoping for dead ends, but my god. Okay, this is a town portal area. This looks like this is, in fact, the right way I've gone. Which sucks, because now I have to go all the way back and find out what I've missed. So, to that end, as you can tell, I've already turned around. I'm heading back where I need to go. It's not gonna kill, that's not something's gonna kill that guy, is it? Oh, no, there we go. We got him now. Axel. This had to get him to die. I saw him floating around the other side of that wall. Alright, so, all the way back to the other dead ends, which are this way, this way, and this way. These chances are these two link up, so we'll go this way first. Yeah, they make those unturned stones so hard to see that I wonder if they really intend for people to find them or actually just tumble on them accidentally. Why are you not hitting them? A new event. Find a way into the tree. How about hitting this switch? That switch looks kind of cool. I don't know whether this is obvious, but killing these guys might help. Leveling up always helps. Okay. Before we go to that room, let's make sure that I've leveled up. I often don't take the time to do this right when it happens. Simply because I've got other things to do. Then I forget it even happened. So, let's see, level 50, this is supposed to be a big one. Okay, that doesn't mean anything to me. And that doesn't mean anything to me. Now, fervor. I gain 10 attacks for you, but isn't that big a deal? But 204 thorns. That rocks. So let's put that on. Okay. Like that. Hey, that didn't open up the door. 
Okay, now. Okay, okay. Oh, so I'm just going to here because this looks like a dead end. Let me just get this dead end up. Oh, ground counter. I don't know everything. Everything melts away when it gets close. That is a lot more powerful than I give it credit for. Okay. So let's wander and get in there. Let's wander around here and get all these switches taken care of. Oh look, a switch. One more. Still be a dead end. I think we'll check that. It is a dead end. Yay! Okay, back this way. Another switch. Just set up the exact right abilities with this character, or whether I discovered this uh, completely true. It seems like the Crusader is vastly overpowered. Everything that it comes across. And I'm not having trouble killing bosses that gave me fits when I was playing the first time through have been completely wiped out. Asmodan in particular, I noticed there was a distinct lack of ooh and ah with fighting him this time through. I'm assuming that's because of Crusaders. Well, um, I don't think I've chosen differently. I don't think I've chosen anything unusual in my setup. So I have a feeling it has to do with being. This character is just way too is fine and all, it allows me to guarantee I'm going to have a, as quick a walkthrough of the expansion act as possible, but at the same point, there's no challenge. I'm going to have to play through the game on a higher difficulty setting, just to get some kind of challenge out of it, which shouldn't be the case with an add-on. I will probably end up doing that at some point, although I do not expect that I will be broadcasting that, since uh, I've got other things I want to broadcast. Today marks a good day for some video game news, as today it was announced that uh, people who are playing their Xbox 360s in Minecraft will be able to port their saves over to the Xbox One. So my intended Minecraft delve that was going to show off what I had done in the previous version of Minecraft is now going to be taking back seat to other stuff. And then when the game releases for the Xbox One, I'll be going in and actually expanding on what I've already done. I haven't lost all the stuff I've done. It's just going to look real dirty when I show it off. So, that was a good piece of news today. And, uh... So there will be a Minecraft stream at some point. Uh, and there might even be an ultimate zone as I go ahead and continue building. What I'm actually... Uh, Recreating in Minecraft. I, I screwed up the uh, scale a little, so I'm going to be starting it again from scratch, which might work very well for Twitch uh, and YouTube. I actually have started creating the uh, what I arguably figure is the most famous of all the Dungeons and Dragons uh, dungeon modules that was released back in the 80s, the Two of Wars. I am going to be recreating the entire dungeon from scratch. Uh, and I might even go so far as to add 
a city built up around the outside of the tomb that is found in the Return to the Tomb of Horrors uh, reimagining of the original module. So that plus I have a couple of other things that I've just built from scratch up uh, sheer enjoyment of my Minecraft. So these things will be featured in upcoming uh, broadcasts on my channel. Here we're discovering that I was indeed right and that these two paths are linking up to each other, which makes it really easy for me to get rid of all the dead ends then head the right direction here. Pretty much everything I need to do in order to go the right way now. Let's make sure I am going the right way. It's a long, convoluted walk, but yes, I am heading the right way. So let's get to it. So, along with Minecraft, what else am I likely to uh, stream? Well, I have uh, Elder Scrolls. I was a beta tester for Elder Scrolls. Uh, so I have played the opening segment of that multiple times. I have a character that I'm happy with now and am prepared to go further into the game. So at some point there's a very large possibility I'll be streaming some of that if people aren't tired of watching that game by then. Um, but for the most part I'm looking at doing retro gaming. I have many, many years under my belt playing Sega Genesis, uh, original Super Nintendo, original Nintendo, Sega Master System, uh, Turbo Graphics to a point, Neo Geo, uh, Dreamcast, Sega CD, all of those old uh, systems I've played a lot on. And there is tons of games that are available now uh, via uh, mods that uh, I'd be able to play and I'm looking forward to getting into. Uh, not only to revisit some old fun, but to also uh, let people watch and participate in the streams. So, requesting games from those eras is a good idea if you want to get involved in the uh, future streaming that I'm going to be doing. I'm also looking at grabbing a PS2 that's backwards compatible for the PS1, because I have tons of PS1 games still on disc, and I'm uh, looking at grabbing a capture card for the uh, computer I'm using, in order to make sure that I can play and stream those games as well. At some point in the future, I'll also be re-obtaining a PS3 and a Wii. Um, I'm also looking at getting a GameCube, and of course I'll be getting the PS4 and probably the Wii U. That'll be further down the road because I'm very much a 360 and Xbox One over, over those uh, other consoles, but I will be getting into all of them at some point. Wait here, and what's popular and when. And join me when it's finished. You're going to kill her, aren't you? I will do what is right. You're all counting on you. So again, feel free whether on whether you're watching this on YouTube, watching this on Twitch, watching it live. I don't have very many people watching it live. Most people just pop in for a minute or two to see what I'm up to. They probably note that I'm only a very first time through with the Crusader. I don't have gems that are worth 400,000 gold. I don't have weaponry that's ridiculous high, so they're not seeing the, uh, the hardest version of the game being played. I'm mainly using this as a way to get everything set up properly, so I know that I'm doing the stream properly and everything's going to run smoothly. I'm doing it to check out my headset, make sure that it's being heard clearly, and make sure that uh, there's no problem with that. As a result, of that, I'm going to have to buy another headset. This is suffice for now, but there's a popping or clicking that comes through regularly that I'm going to have to deal with. So this is just basically to get myself involved in streaming. I show people that I have some kind of ability to play and uh, lead into the stuff I really want to play and uh, get people to enjoy. I play everything from Call of Duty to SimCity, so there's lots of things to uh, 
look at it all depends on what people are interested in watching. Or, barring that, it'll depend on what I feel like playing that day. I will attempt, uh, anywhere possible, to play a game from beginning to end without streaming anything else until I'm done. That way, uh, anybody who is watching this will be able to see an entire game, not snippets from three or four as I go. It'll be one entire game from start to finish until it's complete. Um, I'm also planning on doing some rather special games. One of the games I want to get into sooner or later is uh, Dungeons & Dagger. I don't know how many, or if any, playthroughs are actually on uh, Twitch for that title. But uh, that's pretty much as old school gaming as I can go with a title that has uh, interest. So I'll be getting into that relatively soon, and that will it'll have to be broken up over uh, a couple of videos on YouTube. But given the fact that the original game did not have pause, uh, even though the emulators do have pause, I'm planning on playing it as though I'm playing the original game. I'm going to be adjusting the speed of the game to exactly the way it was when it first came out on the Trash 80 way back in the day. And I'm going to be streaming it in one big chunk from first floor, hopefully, to a successful fifth floor completion, all in one go. So that is going to be uh, one of the uh, one of the streams I'm going to be doing rather soon. That might even be the very next thing I do after Diablo 3. Who knows? Uh, so stay tuned for that. That'll be that won't be long. Um, and any games that are uh, older that have been re-released, such as uh, well, I can think of one in particular is Flashback. Uh, excellent game for the uh, Genesis has been re-released as an add-on to the current uh, reimagining of Flashback that's available on the uh, Xbox 360. So I won't be playing the original game, and I'll probably be avoiding playing it at all um, until maybe it's a retro title again. So, you know, any, anything that's uh, come back or been re-released is not likely to be considered retro by me. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers games, however, uh, it's been a while since they got re-released on, uh, uh, geez, what system was that? The GameCube, I believe, it was released all in one disc, Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, with the uh, Lost Levels. That was released at some point there. And I, uh, th that's old enough that I would consider replaying them, especially since I, I'm pretty good doing speedruns on the first game. Uh, I can do that in about 15 minutes from the beginning of the game to end. Uh, first time so we'll take a look at uh, possibly doing that. Just been told it looks like there are, in fact, no videos on which, uh, again, raises the likelihood of me doing that sooner rather than later very high. I, uh, I probably will be doing that as one of the next, if not the next, uh, streaming opportunity that I do. Um, wonderful game. Spent hours playing that. Fond memories. I even uh, went so far as to make a little plasticine uh, model of one of the creatures in the game. I'll go into that more when I'm actually streaming that particular title. Uh, so I'll be looking forward to playing that for the soon. The Crusade marches on! It would be a shame if Adria's meddling with foul magic killed her before we could. require more rat, like chaff before the wind.
Okay, just to check the map here. So far, everything seems to be funneling me in the correct direction. So things are looking good. Not enough light. Light. Okay, now we have a situation where the pathway is splitting. We're going to focus on this end, but don't be surprised if I have to go the other way. I am a completionist. This is how things get done. For anybody who's watching and wishing I would just hurry up and get things done already and not prepare to move on, keep in mind that my uh, level will be higher, my items will be better. My gold will be larger because I make sure I don't miss any creatures. I don't miss anything that's going to be experienced. Well, it's not that I don't miss them, but I have a lot higher chance of finding things that are going to improve my character as I go through my simply because low. I'm not willing to uh, bypass a dead end. Some of the events I've been doing the last couple of days have been quite off the beaten path. I mean, there was a couple of events that I did that were inside dungeons I technically couldn't even been in, based on the results of doing the switches out on the open area. So, I'm already obviously getting things done. I'm a player who's just in running through as fast as possible. This is not going to say events, challenges, uh, picking up every single one of the uh, writings that I keep stumbling across in the bags. Yeah, the bags are empty now because I made sure I got all the writings in the other dungeons. That, to me, doesn't lower the uh, effect of going into this dungeon. That just means I'm thorough and did a good job earlier. Well, I'm always going back and my dead ends. I'm an avid player of COD as well. I play COD on the game, not bad. I'm in the uh, top 20,000 players of the modes that I really concentrate on, which are demolition, uh, not demolition, <laughs> domination, and um, kill confirmed. Consistently in the top numbers in those particular games, and I attribute it to simply checking my corners when I'm in a situation, entering an area that I'm not familiar with, based on who's there and, and uh, where we last saw my spawn in the area. I use that kind of thinking, that kind of mentality across all my games which is one of the reasons why I find piles of stuff in these games that other people don't even know exist. Because I'm always checking my corners, I'm always going in the route that's not popular because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. It actually doesn't really reach across both those games, but if you stop and think about it, it, it is a matter of the same type of mentality. Or I could be talking through my ass just to have my voice on the uh, chat. Whichever you like. 
It looks like my choice of going this direction at this point has been a good one. It looks like I'm about to link up to the other area that needed me to link up to. And I picked up another rarish item that might just be better than what I've got. right at the beginning of the dungeon that I hadn't gone to. Sweet, sweet vindication. Alright. Okay, which is the fastest way back? Actually, the way I'm already going is the fastest way back. I never knew that Rakis had an interest in the Nephilim. Strange. I'm not picking up anything that's white or gray off the ground. There's just too much loot to pick up to worry about every little trinket in the walls. So I just don't bother. This is one of the few games that that would be the case in. I will almost always invariably ensure that I pick up everything to sell for every ounce of gold I get. This game is just so loot driven that I'm not going to waste my time picking up every little trinket. It's not worth it. The time it would take me to travel back and forth between the dungeon I'm in and the town to sell anything would slow down the game so much more than my uh, determining to be complete what it does that it would make it really good. And boring as hell for me. Rock and rail. watching really closely every single one of the videos I've posted from Act 1 up, you'll notice that I've used approximately, approximately six healing potions so far since starting the game. It makes you wonder why I'm not playing it on hardcore this character, but uh, other than that, I, I didn't expect the game to have this particular so highly overpowered. Or sorry, overpowering. 
Nothing's really giving me trouble except the occasional end at boss fight. And by trouble, I mean it took me an extra three or four hits. So, I'm going to my own golden chamber. Is that the This is... It's not a bad, it could be the entrance to the Great Hall. I don't know, having not been here before now. This door. I'm sorry, I call them boss because I just do. I've been doing that since the young girl. I know that's not what they want to call them for all the champions. I get that. I'm not deliberately being obtuse. I enjoyed that. That's supposed to be some kind of challenge. The one is going on here. I mean, that, that was stupid. Now I'm not even using my special attack. Look how fast he's dropping. There's no challenge to this. I even really used my uh, secondary attack with the right mouse button. I deliberately stayed standing in the crap on the ground that was hurting me. I haven't needed to heal up yet. I haven't touched the button to use a healing potion. You can see I've still got 74 sitting there. I haven't used one. I'm deliberately only using my first attack. Look at that. I haven't healed yet. I'm only just trying to use my secondary abilities. I'm not even using any of the big secondary abilities until right now. You can only carry so much on the crusade. And I have no space to put anything else. Well, that's good. Let's check and see if I've accidentally picked up anything that's crap. Nope. What to do, what to do. Well. I guess I'm just going to have to travel back and come back. I need to go back. To be honest, I can't believe I'm still in business. Okay. Now, as for loot, I know that I'm getting rid of things that are obviously numerically higher than what I've got. At the same point, the reason I'm doing that is because I want all my stats to go up. I'm not just going to upgrade an item because it does more damage, but everything else about it drops. Like, look at these boots. 171 versus 149. Obviously, that's an increase. But I'm using Blessed Shield as an actual ability that I've got equipped. I don't have Sweep Attack as an ability, so I'm losing my Blessed Shield bonus right there. And the Golden Health pickup stays the same. And the thorns, I've already got thorns on me, so an extra 68 damage per hit doesn't throw me. So it's not worth, in my eyes, boosting myself up to 171 when my 149 actually helps me do damage in a very effective way. So, if you're really, really interested in pausing and looking at seeing what I consider an upgrade and what I don't consider an upgrade, You'll see that kind of logic going across everything. Here we have an upgrade. 
that changes my stats, everything to green. It's not really going to pay attention. It actually increases my condemn damage by 2% more than what I've already got. The resistance doesn't matter at all to me because I don't care about resistances. This is an upgrade. This item I'm not using flanks, so that's something that I can easily give up in order to get 56 more armor out of this item. The strength means I'm doing more Surely damage. there is someone out there who would Pick benefit from our nice, aid I'm right now. Extra gold, but again, I don't care much about gold as far as this goes. So that is also an upgrade right there. Plus, it looks really cool on my character. Ah, oh, the chest armor. That is incredible chest armor. That's really incredible chest armor. It also increases condemned, increases my experience for monster kills. The survival bonus is the only thing that concerns me. But I think I'm going to keep this. I'm going to equip it and possibly gem it up. We'll take a look and see if that's the case as we go. Well, there's a shield that's big all over the place. And it's a monster giving experience boost. Versus four maximum wrath. I can give up four maximum wrath. That works. Okay. Nah. Rare rings. Nothing. And the big item. What have we got here? It's got a socket, so I might be able to put a uh, ruby in there. That'll increase its damage even higher. I like the bleed. I like the ignoring the durability loss. I like the healing aspect that's gone on. You know what? I think we just got ourselves a new weapon. And even better than that, We'll see in just a second. There's the old shield that I can go. Okay, we'll take a look at that. We haven't decided fully on that yet. But here's the interesting bit. I make sure my follower is very well equipped. My follower is currently using a gemmed 222. Then he's going to go up and he's going to have ah, an incredible good. rate of damage. Look at that. 10,512. My damage is only 11,476. He's within a thousand of doing the same damage that I'm doing. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so now we have to get rid of the gem that's in that weapon. So I can ditch it into the stash. I'm keeping all my weaponry and armor that is unique like these in my stash for use in future endeavors. I'm going to do the combined gem stuff specifically on the rubies because of the boost they give me for damage in particular. Oh, I guess I'll also get this one as well. There, that's done. Okay, so we've got a square diamond. Or not square diamond, square ruby. Let's go take a look and see what I've got here. Okay. Put in the diamond. I'm not likely to be using that in what I'm about to do. Okay, so we've got a weapon. It wants to do more damage, but I think that's going to be some sword. That's fine. Let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, rubies. 26 strength. So I think that's a good idea. What else have we got here? Resistance, don't really care. Intelligence, not for me. Dexterity, not for me. Vitality not for me. What if I just do that for now? 
means I'm doing more damage, and as I increase those gems will be even better. The toughness goes down, but I'm not really concerned about that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do this. Oh, wait a second, I never even thought of that. <laughs> Boy, I'm silly, aren't I? I've actually got gems on me that are rubies that are in the piece I'm replacing. So how about this? Let's remove the gems from that again. Remove the gems from this. And try this again. Nothing to go... Okay, that's fine. So we've got two of these now. I don't think anything else I own, but that can also have. There, that's much better. I think. That's much better. Yeah, now it's a 4% increase in damage instead of a 1% or 0.1%. Excellent. left into the whole ruby column. Alright, back we go. Okay, let me just tab this quickly. Alright, that's going to nowhere in particular. This is the room we're trying to get into. experience. That's not bad. And a bunch of stuff. Yay, a bunch of stuff. Okay, let's go this way. Further in. But I got some experience out of it, and I'm going to take it. Just the door. 
before you start doing your weird dance. There we go. And as promised, I'll check out this step out here. Since I'm up here. Let's assume this is a dead end. But of course, that's not a dead end. That's the actual way I'm supposed to go. Okay then, so this is all dead end over this way. So let's go over here and finish it off. You see that? By being thorough, I've met five bosses, or sorry, champions I know of. Five. And I uh, had a trip that would have known to sit in and not gone this way. If I had checked the other path even a little bit, I would have noticed very quickly that it was a stairway down. I never would have gone any further if I was doing just a quick run through. So to me, all the time that I'm spending walking around doing nothing, getting from place to place through corpses I've already killed, is really worth it to me because the amount of loot I get, the amount of items that I pick up that are actually improvements on what I've got. I mean, not every time you go into a dead-end area like that and have a challenge where you're going to get an improvement on the items that you're wearing. But the more you roll the dice, the more likely you are to find something that is better. And achievements are always good, too. Let's see where you've been hiding, Malthiel. Adrian. The angels will never suffer us to like live. It. They cannot accept the fact that we may choose our own path. At least demons are not so rigid in their beliefs. I have done what I can to ensure it. He always finds a way. In your heart of hearts, you know this. I'll let anybody who's played the games at this point judge whether or not that was ridiculous and easy or not. I personally think it was too. Before she died, Adria conjured an image of Pandemonium. She was searching for Malthael, so he must be there. go back. So, by saying it's harder when you're playing it on a harder level, yeah, but the weapons are the more damage and everything else, so... I don't know. Let's talk to everybody who wants to talk. 
See? Aren't you happy I didn't tell you beforehand that Adria would turn into a hideous monster? Why would that make me happy? You always seem so calm. I thought you'd enjoy a surprise or two. Petty details would have just served to distract you. Seems our friend Malthael is in pandemonium. No doubt he has gone to the fortress. Malthael can hold out there until the end of time. He is forcing us to come to him. He's clever, delaying us while his power grows with each moment. The only way to pandemonium is through the high heavens. Let us leave at once. Huh. Not through a sewer this time. Traipsing off to the high heavens. my brother. I fought a thousand battles by his side, and I care not that he seeks to destroy you and your kind. But my brother has grown sick, and he must be put down for his own sake. Yet I have not the heart to do this. And so it falls to you. Come, Nephilim, to Pandemonium. Malthael tried to keep me from entering Pandemonium. I must be moving faster than he anticipated. Now, I will cross this wilderness, past the wreckage of countless battles between Angel and Demon. Somewhere out there is the Pandemonium Fortress, where the Angel of Death waits for me. MP. 
Imperius want you to follow him. I don't like this. All these bodies seems like he's doing more There's a siege camp not far from here. Meet me there, and I will show you what must be done. Some soldiers of hell. Having grown accustomed to the taste of war, they remained in pandemonium long after the last siege of the fortress ended. Now, they regard the realm as their own and terrorize any angels who venture onto the battlefield. Pandemonium is a vast, chaotic realm, and many demons remain scattered throughout it. In particular, the war-scarred marauders were unwilling to return to the Hells, and they have taken to pillaging the remaining angelic outposts in the battlefields. They may not be the most powerful of their kind, but they are clever and insidious, and no strangers to war. That's not fair. I got a whole bunch of things to kill, and what happens? He destroys. I could easily take on that whole group. So just piss off on each other. Looks like that is what my character is built for. It's kind of disappointing that the game is taking it from its own hands do that, which I'm really, really proud of. At least I get to do this. Ram below. That is the only way you can breach the fortress gates. But it is useless without the siege runes that power it. You have one in your possession, but there are two more. You will find them on the battlefield below, imprisoned along with the demons that carried them. Once you have the runes, go to the ram. The 
But know this, Nephilim. Even if you release Malfael from his madness, I will not thank you for it. That would be asking too much. Inhabitants must be resourceful to survive, but none more so than the scavengers who armor themselves in the very rocks beneath their feet. They may appear as mighty giants to their foes, but a few hard strikes will reveal that their true form is much smaller. The servants of evil are vanquished! My journey to Pandemonium has allowed me to see a new world. One that is almost too fantastic for mortal eyes. Ancient battlefields stretch before me. A desolate space that is occupied by small, scouring beasts. They search the lands endlessly, thriving off the magic that lingers from battles long past. Makes me appreciate our world even more. Weird how I wasn't touching her until I moved. It's not a problem I'm not I suspect out. that the barbed lurker is part demon, for its appearance has an aspect far too sinister to occur naturally. It expels a noxious poison worthy of the hells. And from what I can tell, it will only feed on its own kind or the corpses of demons. One hopes it will never encounter a human.
This cannot be opened yet. I remember back in the first Diablo, the shrines were so important. Couldn't tell what they did to you. Not most of the time, but boy, they made a big difference. Now they're neither here nor there, really. I guess that's just how the games evolved. Of course, the original Diablo was also a dungeon crawl, a hardcore dungeon crawl. You really had to want to be in a dungeon. an event? Isn't that just the normal walk of the game? I mean, okay, so maybe all these challenges are not exactly
what am I going to do with archer's gear? Do I look like an archer? biggest fight in this little side area is actually on the way out after you've killed the boss. That was the biggest fight of the whole little room there. Beasts of Pandemonium in Cain's old writings. He journeyed there 20 years ago to help a band well, of heroes seal away the prime evils, and his discoveries so really appeared to shake the people. Right. Sometimes he would stare outside the fortress walls, the and winged beasts would appear, calling his name. Fight, light be down. Returning to town. Anything trivial? Yes. Okay. Oh, Emily 
Sight you to say what you want to say, Emily. We can't start to rebuild until we know that the one who caused this devastation is dead. I am still searching for him. I swear to you, he will pay. I hope so. Another. <sighs> Leave me alone. I'm getting drunk, and no, I'm not sharing. The people of Westmarch are starting to rebuild the city and bury their dead. Their strength is an inspiration. But there are children that witness their family being torn apart. Others climbed over piles of corpses to get to safety. What will they make of the world when they grow up? The city has scars that will linger for generations. Deckard Kane wrote much about the Pandemonium Fortress. He kept meticulous notes drew sketches, and even made some maps. But nothing matches what is there now. The fortress has changed so much since Malthael took over. I like how they give you hope and they dash it. He's got maps, he's got all this information. Oh, but it's changed, so never mind. I tried to leave the city today, but the gates are all closed. The guards won't let anyone in or out. What are you going to do? Stay here and hide, I guess. I am a coward. Stop that. You're a good man. And the coward. According to the records, King Rackus had a strong jaw, hair as black as night, and wore gleaming armor over his muscular. Sorry. The Zakarun Church always held an unhealthy sway in Westmarch, even after the ascension of rulers more interested in power than religion. When the true nature of the faith was finally exposed, however, it completely eroded any influence the church had over civil affairs. And rightly so, I might add. Every time Westmarch is invaded, a hero appears to save it. History is much easier to write with a strong protagonist. I see death everywhere. Even when amongst the living, I see the specter of endless night. But you are different. Death's shadow surrounds you. It obscures all else. Thanks. Raukas and his sons built much of Westmarch during their time. The ruins and the marshes outside the city may be their work, too. Can't everybody done talking to me? Everybody shut up. So, uh, what do you need? thought on what you said, and you may have been right. 
Can't bear the thought of another friend's death. Good point. Better to spend your life alone, with no friends at all. Much better that way. Do you ever just say something like a normal person? <sighs> but you have a point. Lyndon left a dagger here earlier. I'm guessing you're behind that. Anything interesting about it? Hmm. Let me look. It's well crafted for a king's bolt blade, and uh, oh, the hilt seems to be hollow. Someone hid a note inside. Here, you should take it to Lyndon. In the end, Zai trapped Durgis in the ruby Lyria had worn. Zai kept the stone around his neck as a reminder. In time, though, the burden grew too great to bear, and he cast off the stone, his divinity, everything. Where there once stood a young god, there was now just an old man. An old man, you say? So the story says. <laughs> I wonder if Shen really is meant to be a god. That's very interesting. Okay, anything else from the world? Take care of that, and then, okay, so I guess we're gonna go back in the bunker. Pick up my stuff. siege weaponry that we can use to create a diversion and draw Malthael's creatures away from the ramp. We can't fight and repair it at the same time. Protect us while we do our work.
giant with a gaping hollow at its core. Somehow, it can hide its body away 
disguising itself as a mere portal. Those who pass through it are trapped in a distant world, never to be seen again. Fight! Light be down! I'm basically trying to get the end of it. Try to get to the end of wherever it's going. So I'm going to go back and start playing other games. I figure out what the heck I've gotten myself into here.
this is an issue all this stuff. So let's go up here and do exactly that. said that I had two of them back to back.
teleporter just takes me back to the battlefield. So does this. So I'm also just going back to my cave. No sense walking all the way down there to go for the same teleporter I'm basically going through. the eternal conflict raged since the beginning of time. When I fight a battle, I mean to win it. Eternal sounds rather pointless, doesn't it? And I always felt the same way. That led him to create us. the ram, but I can't do anything with it until I've got all the siege runes. at the center of all things, linking the realms of heaven and hell. Long ago, when the angels were young, the aspect of wisdom found the eye of Anu here. He named it the World Stone, and all of heaven swore to protect it.
krass. minus some house cleaning uh, work. Further on into the act. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.